of Sri Aurobindo. Part 2 Letters on the Mother by Our Lord. Chapter 9 The Mother and the Working of the Ashram. Page 224. Topic Necessity of Transforming the Vital for Success in Yoga. Question I had a belief that all those who have been called to do this yoga will realize the divine in this very birth sooner or later. But I heard from someone the mother has of course chosen only those who have got the capacity to do this yoga but they will reach the goal only if the vital gets transformed. If not, they will realize in the next birth. Is it so? For this question, Sri Aurobindo says, Mother has never spoken anything to be done in the next birth. Naturally, the vital has to be transformed if one is to succeed. Date, 15th Jan, 1934. Topic, Reasons for Sadak's going away from the mother. Question, how is it that someone who come to the mother with a clear aspiration and call go away from her after some time? What is it that takes them away? For the Sri Aurobindo says, through the suggestions of the hostile forces because of pride, egoism, ambition, sexual desire, vanity, greed or any other vital impulse urged by the hostile powers. Next question. Are the vital forces so strong that in spite of a clear aspiration and divine call in a person, they can draw him away from the mother? For this, Sri says, every man is free at every moment to consent to the divine call or not to consent to follow the lower nature or to follow his soul. Next question. Does their leaving the path not mean that they were unable to judge by their knowledge whether they called for the divine was true or not? For this, Sri says, all this about judging is nonsense. You feel the call or you do not. And if you feel the call, you follow it without calculating or counting risks or asking whether you are fit or not. Next question. When people strongly feel the urge to leave the sadhana and go away from the mother, what is the best way for them to counteract this urge and stick on to the mother? Sri Aurobindo says, by understanding that it is the devil who tempts them and not listening to the devil. Question, can those sadhaks who lived in the ashram for many years forget the mother's grace after leaving it? Sri Aurobindo says, some of them seem to forget. Question, is there any possibility of their returning to, the, to do the sadhana under the mother? Sri Aurobindo says, it depends on the person. Date, 6th September 1933. Sri Aurobindo says, when the psychic being has been fully awake, then it is not possible for the sadhak to revolt and go away. For if he does, he leaves his soul behind with the mother. And it is only the outer being that lives for a while elsewhere. But that is too painful a condition. One has either to come back or life becomes hardly worth living. Date, 20th November, 1935. Sri Aurobindo continues to say, What you have written is quite correct. To say that the divine is defeated when a sadhak goes away is an absurdity. If the sadhak allows his lower nature to get the better of him, it is his defeat, not the divine's. The sadhak comes here 
not because the divine has need of him but because he has the need of the divine if he carries out the conditions of the spiritual life and gives himself to the mother's leading he can attain his goal but if he wants to lay down his own conditions and impose his own ideas and his own desires on the divine then all the difficulty comes this is what happened to x and y and several others because the divine does not yield to them they go away but how is that a defeat for the divine date 27th may 1937 next topic working of the conscious force in the ashram sri arbindo says what seems to me of more importance is to try to explain how things are worked out here Indeed very few are the people who understand it and still fewer those who realize it there has never been at any time a mental plan a fixed program or an organization decided beforehand the whole thing has taken birth grown and developed as a living being by a movement of consciousness chit tapas constantly maintained increased and fortified as the conscious force descends in matter and radiates it seeks for fit instruments to express and manifest it it goes without saying that the more the instrument is open receptive and plastic the better are the results the two obstacles that stand in the way of a smooth and harmonious working in and through the sadhaks are number 1 the preconceived ideas and mental constructions which block the way to the influence and the working of the conscious force second the preferences and impulses of the vital which distort and falsify the expression both these things are the natural output of the ego without the interference of these two elements my physical intervention would not be necessary you are quite right when you do not believe in mother likes mother dislikes it is quite a childish interpretation there is a clear precise perception of the force and the consciousness at work and whenever this force gets distorted or the consciousness is obscured in ev- in their action i have to interfere and rectify the moment in most cases things are mixed up and there again i have to intervene to separate the distorted transcription from the pure one otherwise a great freedom of action is left to all because the conscious force can express itself in innumerable ways and for the perfection and integrality of the manifestation no ways are to be a priori excluded a trial is very often given before the selection is made date 22nd august 1939